Okay, welcome to my messy desk. Um, I was going to clean it up and make it look really nice and perfect, but that's not real. So <laughs> I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, I think it'll be easy to still see everything I'm talking about, though. Um, my name's Megan from Art Garden Oracle. Most of my content so far has been um, tarot videos. So uh, that's the Oracle part of my channel, if you're confused. Um, so yeah, the Oracle part is kind of tarot. will eventually be a lot more um, astrology content. I have some gardening part of my channel, which is my permaculture urban garden and sharing more of that info. And then the art part of my channel will be um, just kind of adventures in art. Um, I'm kind of later in life following my dreams, all three of these being big parts of that. Um, so I'm currently teaching art classes um, to kids and we'll start doing adults soon. Um, I'm sharing in a few shows and starting um, Etsy and art markets and stuff like that. So Tarot has been the easiest place to film content. Um, I have a bunch of gardening and art content, but kind of putting together those videos has proven a little difficult. Like I just can't figure out quite how to put them together. So I'm going to start with a little bit of easier art content, which this is not a haul video. This is um, not that I don't love those. I just I'm trying to be really careful about the like boosting consumerism <laughs> content part of my channel because I don't really that's not my goal my goal is um with art specifically um my goal in these art videos in particular and kind of with all parts of the channel um is really just to encourage people to make more art whether you want to be an artist or not I just think a lot of people get discouraged because of bad supplies or someone being critical in their life but I think art is so therapeutic. I think it can be used, yeah, as just like journaling um, to really, it can be really helpful and a really like rich experience. And it can just be fun if you don't want help. So anyway, this video is like my go-to um, art supplies that I just bring with me everywhere. And this is like really ramped up my the level at which I practice, not the level, but just the frequency with which I practice. And it took me so long to really develop a sketchbook practice. So a big part of that was the right tools. So that's what this video is about. The other part of that will probably be a different video, which is just like little tips and tricks and resources I've found that have helped me loosen up in my sketching, do it more, judge it less, um, enjoy it more, uh, and get, yeah, mostly more loose and more realistic in terms of what a sketchbook practice really looks like. Because I think a lot of people watch and see sketchbooks from, like, amazing artists and get really intimidated and, and don't go for it. So, um, again, not to, like, push the consumerism side of things, I will include links below. Um, a lot of this has, of what I'm going to show, has come from Amazon. I kind of really late to my art party... Um, discovered how awesome my local art supply store is. Um, it was something that just kind of was off my radar for a while. And I recently went in there to make a bunch of um, Gicle prints for a show coming up. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this place is awesome. And their prices are so competitive. So, um, you know, certainly use these links to kind of look at what I'm talking about. Um, but please support your local art supply store if you have one. And um, yeah. I don't know. Get tools that help you create art more, um, but resist, yeah, going broke and just trying to buy everything <laughs> if you can, because that is a trap that can go down really easily. This is a perfect example. This um, color wheel pen, so it's just pinned into my case, um, is from Amazon, but I was in my store just yesterday painting or painting paying for the prints that I got and they had these up at the register and I was like dang it like I never would have thought you had that but they did um I have like a paper color wheel in my other art space but um this guy it has um triadic colors which are great for creating color palettes it has complementary colors and monochromatic colors um and it's just a fun way when I'm just kind of stuck one of my tools to like enjoying your artwork more but not making it feel like it has to be a masterpiece is to have a, you know, just a good color palette or do like limited color palette drawings. Um, 
sometimes with like one or two colored pencils. So I can show you an example. This is, um, beep, beep, if I can find it, <laughs> a limited color palette drawing I did of my husband when he was little. And, um, I just had three colors. And so that can be really fun. Uh, and I will often use this pen for that. And it's just like handy right there on my travel case. So this travel case and a small sketchbook, like what I just showed you, if I'm just like going for a 30 minute drive in the car, if I'm going to an appointment where I might have to wait for a second, if I'm picking up my kids somewhere, you know, just anywhere <laughs> now I bring this, I'll often just keep it in my purse a lot of times. So this um, pencil case is from Amazon. Um, I got it a while ago. I went through a few pencil cases before I came to this one. Um, I'll show you on another pencil case what some of the challenges were, but a lot of them had this pocket oriented long ways. So there was like a big mesh pocket that went all the way down and I could never get what I needed out. <laughs> so this pencil case has these shallow pockets to store all these little baby things. Um, and then a big kind of central deep pocket to store the other thing was like these longer things that I needed to store, they were just oriented weird and it would make the pencil case bulge really badly and I couldn't get what I needed in there. So let me make sure all this stuff is in there. I put this in my um, tarot videos before, but like I garden like a crazy person. So not in art videos, most art videos, people have like ink all over their hands and stuff, but tarot videos, people have really nice hands. Um, so yeah, my hands are beat up and they like look dirty, but I just have like permanent like garden hands no matter how much I wash them. So apologies in advance. So um, these all, like every little tiny thing in here has been like painstakingly tried and researched and approved after a really long period of time. So these are Uniball Signo White pens. I'm probably, like, I'm not going to say the perfect thing on a lot of these videos. Um, I tried a lot of gel white pens that did not work. Um, and I use these for, I'll use them for highlights, just in, like, I'll use them in, to make corrections on things. Um, I'll just use them to draw on, I like, you know, painting a dark surface and drawing in white on it. Um, so these are the best white pen I've found so far that really kind of work on most media. Um, obviously it's not going to do great. I can't remember which one of these is oil media, but it's not going to do as well on oil media. But, um, I've tried a lot of these where people say like they write on anything and they don't. And this is the one I, I've, people still critique this one for the same thing, but I found it to be the most successful white pen I have. So that's always in here. This is like my, can do just about any kind of media, um, case too. This is just a pilot. It's like an intro um, fountain pen. I It's not waterproof ink in here right now um, because I'm just using the cartridge it came with. Um, I do plan on putting waterproof media in it. And I actually, the I'll do a different video um, on fountain pens because I'm kind of a crazy fountain pen person. Um, Pilot's one of my favorites. Like this one is great. This is the Lamy pen and I have um, like disposable cartridges for these, but I also have the um, refillable cartridges too. So this is another one I'm going to put waterproof ink in. This is, I normally don't use blue in my fountain pens. Um, because, well, I just don't draw with it that much, <laughs> but that was, it was a mistake through Amazon. It was supposed to be black ink, but it came in blue. This is the, um, Sailor, uh, oh, what's it called? Like Fuasaki or something. I'll put it below cause I'm forgetting it, but, um, it's a Japanese pen. This one's awesome. There was, oops. And the, <laughs> the ink is probably really dry cause I haven't used this in so long. It's either dry or empty. I'm not sure which. Um, this is like highly recommended by, ooh, there's ink in there. This is highly recommended by a lot of artists. And I read this really cool, if I can find it, I will link it below. This really cool um, ink artist that uses this. Oh, here it comes. So this nib, 
is you can do really thick lines or you can turn it around and do really fine line things and it's great for like doing all pen and ink drawing for sure i really like it it is not the best for like transporting around because it doesn't have a clip like it falls out of things easily and i lose it easily this was my first fountain pen it's just like a pilot like nine dollars you know super affordable um this one is the one is it yeah this, this is the one i bent the nib i dropped it on the floor accidentally but it made it like an ultra fine point and i was like i'm still gonna keep it so it doesn't write super well. I, I'm going to try to work on bending it back a little bit more. Um, but I have a replacement that still does work well. It was my first. Um, and like still up there is one of my almost favorites for sure. And then this is my most expensive fountain pen I have. A lot of people have like, this was like 30 bucks. A lot of people have like $70 fountain pens, which I just don't understand. But this is the Twisby fountain pen. And um, it has... It's only, like, it doesn't have a cartridge. You only use refillable ink in it. I can't remember what ink I have in here right now. Oh, it's like a dark blue. I think it has a little bit of sparkle in it, too. So this is nice because you just twist the end to kind of pull up ink and um, empty out the cartridge, too. So that's my nicest one. It's not my favorite to write with, but it's great for um, art and, like, using different inks in it. Anyway, I didn't mean for this to be like a fountain pen tour, but I basically, I really enjoy writing with fountain pens just like for journaling and stuff. So I always have one in my art kit. Um, it just makes writing enjoyable. This one is the Kakuno Pilot. So it's meant to be, I think, like a super intro level. I want to say it was like $8 too. Um, and yeah, I like it just as much as the black um, pilot. It doesn't have the, again, the clip, which I often don't, I'm not good about putting this back in my kit all the time. And it like flies out and I lose fountain pens all the time. To date though, knock on wood, I've like thought I lost forever so many pens. Um, and I haven't lost a single fountain pen. I have a few others I'll show, like I said, in that other video, a few other favorites too. Um, this guy is that all graphite pencil. I really like these a lot. I can't remember what brand this is. I've had it for a long time. So it's in one of these pencil holders. These were just cheapos I found on Amazon. Oh, it's not on here. That's funny. Uh, I think a bunch of different brands make these, but it's just like graphite through and through. Um, it loses its point really fast. <laughs> I have to sharpen it constantly, but I do really like them. I don't, I don't like... I'm not a classically trained artist. I didn't go to school for it. Um, thank you, parents, for talking me out of it. Uh, that's sarcastic because I wish I had majored in art because I haven't ever used my real degree that I got. So I wish I had studied art. But yeah, I, I can't put my finger on it. And like, I don't know the technical reason why I enjoy writing with or drawing with these, but I do. My son, who is 10, <laughs> I got him one of these. He really likes drawing with it. He almost only does art and graphite. Um, so yeah, if it wins his approval, that's pretty good. This is the Tombow Mono Zero. Um, they have a larger version. This is the 0.56, I think. Ultra fine 2.3 millimeter eraser. So it's just like a really detailed eraser, which is awesome and works super well. Um, and there are cartridges or like cartridges replacements, which I'm pretty sure I have in this one. Is that a lie? Nope, I have my other replacements, but they do have replacement cartridges too. And I think I keep that in my larger, my larger art case. This is just like um, a Nick Pro. This is like a drafting drafting pencil. Um kit that I got off Amazon and it had like a ton of different um, types of mechanical pencils and then like all of the um, corresponding graphite replacements and then this one the larger one doesn't have a eraser this more smaller diameter or whatever size ones do have erasers up here and it comes with replacement razors erasers too good night same things happening here um this has like it's not obviously it's not gonna change I saw someone who was like you can change the hardness of your pencil <laughs> it's like no you can't do that it depends what um 
pencil lead you put in there. So based on what you put in, like this one's HB, then you would turn it and make sure you know what kind of lead is in there. So this is the, the fatter guy, the 2.0. And um, then I have, I used to have the thinner guy in here, but I have the 2.0 millimeter um, lead in here for replacements. Oops, and I put the wrong one. The thin lead was that. This is supposed to be 2B. Sorry, let me fix that because I will not remember next time. Okay, um, so a mechanical pencil, just because it's always nice if you're like, crap, I forgot my pencil sharpener, which I do so often. I so often will go to like, I'm in a figure drawing group once a week and I'll go and it seems like every time I forget my pencil sharpener I have to borrow it so I try not to forget to make sure that's in there. This is my favorite brush pen. It's a pen towel brush pen. Um, it is it's so good. I can't say enough good things about it so it can get really fine. I love to draw with it and it draws over everything. It draws over acrylic. I've used it on like huge acrylic paintings I've done. It's just really good ink and it has replaceable um, cartridges in it. But like I've used the crap out of this and I still haven't replaced the cartridge yet. So that's awesome. Um, I also haven't priced the replacement cartridges. I have one other cartridge this came with. So I haven't had to, and it's just lasted so long, I haven't had to replace it yet. But it's my absolute favorite. Um, this pen is the Pilot G Tech C4. Um, these are just like super fine liner, like really fine pens that I really like a lot. Um, they don't write over quite as much as I would have hoped, but they're just really fun to draw with. So I like got a huge pack of these, um, and kind of keep them in all of my grab and go art things. I learned about this guy from, um, so Sophie, oh my gosh, Sophie McPike. I think it's Sophie. I'm having a... I always do that whenever I'm filming. I like brain fart on people whose name I should definitely know. So I found that through her and I really like drawing with it. So it's, again, just kind of inks. This one's mostly used for writing, but inks at different um, kind of nib thicknesses or whatever. My white ink and then different kind of graphite options. This is um, Holy Smokes Blackwing. <laughs> Blackwing 602. Um, some people use the Palomino, some people, you know, have their favorites. This was the first one I tried, and I just found a really good deal on a box of them because they're really expensive. Um, I really like them a lot. They have these replaceable um, replaceable erasers in the top. Um, I don't go through crazy amounts of erasers, but my son sure as heck does. <laughs> it's like every pencil in our house is missing an eraser, but it has these replacement erasers you can put in it. I didn't get the matching ones, but um, the erasers are really good. The pencil is really good. Um, this one is kind of designed to be able to get a lot of different, I'm going to get graphite everywhere, a lot of different line value with one lead. Um, I was like, I want to try this like black wing thing and see what I think. Uh, I'm not convinced it's the best pencil ever or that it's so good that it's worth having an expensive pencil, but I like it a lot. So half the pressure, twice the speed. I do find, yeah, that you can get a lot out of it with, without the, without very much pressure and the lead quality and the eraser quality is excellent. So for now, I'm a fan. I don't know once my box is gone if I'll just like keep going with it. We'll see. Or if I'll try one of the other types of pencils. But there's just a lot of really good pencils out there. Another one I just got from my art store is this Rembrandt Graphite Aquarelle. It was like $1.50. It's a 4B. Like this one, this one also feels really good. It's definitely softer than the 602. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I really like graphite and I, my son like swears by the like just yellow Ticonderogas and those are great too. Um, so yeah, graphite is fun and I like to use it in a lot of different ways. One other graphite tool that I don't have in my like everyday grab bag. Sorry, I'm kind of getting off topic of my graph bag, but grab bag, but, um, 
I'm just showing you these little things I love. Hold on. I actually just got a replacement because I'm going to use this in, in the art class that I'm going to start teaching on Monday, but I really like these guys. Um, I've seen people with the like pans of graphite too, and I plan on getting those. It's just not, hasn't been quite in the budget, but yeah, I love, I love all mediums <laughs> and I love like exploring really unique products within each medium. So these are awesome. So they're water soluble. Um, I love using them in mixed media. I love using them with watercolor. Um, you can just really like draw something and then get some really cool effects when you add other water media to them. So that's another like favorite graphite tool. So in this middle pouch, this is like the flexible middle pouch of my grab and go bag. Um, I have this, <laughs> is it, I don't even know this brand, Div something, but you've probably seen these. They're um, all over the place. I feel like a lot of artists have them. I know Timu, like a lot of the Timu art halls have been using these lately too. You'll see how messy I like leave my watercolor palettes. Um, I got this a long time ago. I want to say I got it off Amazon, but I'm not 100% sure. It has a huge array of colors and the pigment quality is really excellent <laughs> for just, and I have a lot of like travel watercolor palettes. I have all the metal ones. I have not a lot, not as many as some I've seen, but like I have a lot of different watercolor options and for just like knowing I can paint anything I want and have it in a really small footprint, I really love this thing. It has a little um, palette here in the back. You'll see how dirty mine is. And I even use this thing as a palette and I even use <laughs> like right here as a palette. Um, you know, when I'm just trying to like, eventually I get it to where everything's muddy and I have to clean something off to get the more vibrant parts of the palette. But um, this sponge works amazingly well. Like the whole thing just is really impressive. Um, it comes with one of these. I don't think this is the one it came with. I think these are, yeah, these are the Pentel. These are my favorite watercolor, like water filled brushes. A lot of people like, I think Derwent makes some, um, I'm trying to think what other ones, like a lot of people like the but button push ones. I don't like that. I feel like this gives me the most control um, and is just like the cleanest. And I like the nib or the nib. I like the brush sizes on them. Um, I have a couple other varieties that I just hardly ever pick up and they seem to malfunction a lot. This one isn't without malfunction, but I have, it's usually just in ones I really abuse. <laughs> um, so this set is awesome for just like crazy, um, convenient, like concise packaging. Oh crud. I did make a color palette color palette, a swatch sheet with it. And I thought I had it here, but I don't because I wanted to show you how great the color range was. Darn it. Um, I tend to lose it a lot. That's my only complaint is like, there's not a good place to store, um, a swatch sheet for this. And it's really hard. These do not match what the actual color looks like. And you can never tell I mean, I'm sure you probably could, like, is this the first one or is this the first one? I don't know. You can't tell, like, what they coordinate with. So that's kind of annoying. This is just the black watercolor. Um, and like I said, I made a whole swatch sheet and it made it so much easier to use this. But I need to, like, take the next step. I need to, like, laminate it or something and put it in my um, case so that I have it more ready to use. So anyway, I tend to be pretty messy with my watercolor. Um, you know, I'll like mix right on the color pan all the time. Um, and that works okay for me. I am terrible with brushes. I'm trying to get better, especially because I started investing in some nicer watercolor brushes, but like my acrylic brushes and even my watercolor brushes, I'm embarrassed how I treat them, but um, what I also usually keep down underneath the watercolor is this Molito, um, I might not be pronouncing that correctly, but it's masking liquid. I don't use masking liquid a lot, but this one works really well. It's a little more intense. I have, um, I have a jar one that comes off easier. This one has like freaked me out a couple times that I thought I was gonna like take off a bunch of the paper. Uh oh, it got gummy. 
um, and it ended up working fine, but it's made me nervous. So anyway, it has, it turns blue. This paper is like really crappy. It's not watercolor paper or anything, um, but it turns blue so that you can see where you've put it, which is handy. My other one does not like come out blue like that. So I keep that in there just for like an easy watercolor use. And then I keep a black and white Posca. These are the, um, what is the size? I don't even know how that works. I don't know if like this is the size, but that seems like a range of sizes, <laughs> whatever. It's the like pretty fat one, not the fattest they make, but one of the fatter ones. So I use this, um, like so that I can do shading or highlights or just black and white detail on any media I might bring with me, which is really handy because usually it's watercolor when I'm just like plein air painting or on the go painting, but I'll show you here in a second the like other add-ins I can use with this and it's nice to have those markers that can go on top of anything. Um, and I know it's like rule breaking to use something else for watercolor, white, um, but when I sketch in my sketchbook, I don't have rules, and so <laughs> I like to have those on me. Um, this is super handy. It's a metal, tiny little ruler. Um, again, I found a set online, so I have this one in this case. I have a slightly longer one in my beefier case, and then I have a really long one for my um, art space when I work at home. And here I have, like I said, these. Um, it's just like backup helper supplies, so backup... Um, lead backup eraser I have these little folding scissors that are handy because I also do fiber arts but it's also just handy of like I want to cut a paper down or I don't know what else I would use it for but um that's handy I have a teeny tiny <laughs> um pencil sharpener that I try to keep in there always this is just like dollar store pink eraser um this might have been from the dollar store it might have been from the grocery store so I was struggling with my um, Prismacolors. I know a lot of people have mentioned this. So a couple of um, pencil sharpeners I had were totally being rough on Prismacolor and I was about to buy the like more expensive Prismacolor sharpener. But I wanna say I like actually got this from my kids. It was like a school supply or something, but these teeny tiny cheapo sharpeners work great on Pism <laughs> Prismacolor. It's not like the most perfect point that I would ever want, but it definitely doesn't break the lead. So that's a win. Um, and then I have the worst washi tapes ever. I think these are from the dollar store. I do not recommend that. I have thicker washi tapes that are much better. I have um, a little binder clip and this isn't just the pilot um, backup. I also have, oh, that's not maybe true. I probably used it, but oh no, yeah. So I have multiple, oh, I do, yeah. So I have multiple, um, this is the Coico replace my cartridge. So I have multiple cartridges in there so that if I do throw a different fountain pen um, in or like form that pilot, um, no, it's the feud. I just remembered <laughs> the, the sailor, it's the feud pen. So like I always have a cartridge to put in any of those. So that is like the base level of this art set. And it goes together really nicely. It doesn't bulge too crazy. You know, I'm not like putting a bunch of stress on the zippers. And that is my like grab and go anywhere um, art kit. And I always, my favorite, this will kind of come with the other video, but um, my other trick to like sketching a lot more and doing a lot more artwork is to get a really tiny sketchbook. This one is like totally beat up. <laughs> um, this is the art creation talons. I don't have the size in here, a teeny tiny one. I haven't even done my like intro page in here. But it's like, it's basically like five inches, I think, a five inch square. This guy is, um, I do not recommend. These are those handbook brand ones. I bought this thinking it was a two set and I thought it was a watercolor, their watercolor one, and it's just their sketch one. And I just like love to play with water media and so I was really bummed it doesn't handle water media super well and it has like a lot of bleed through so I'm trying to see yeah like a ton of bleed through um the this is just like sketchbook too it's not water paper but I can't go crazy with water media but it handles it pretty well like this is all 
watercolor and there's not bleed through and there's not um like warping and stuff so this is my favorite just like fill it up quick sketchbook on the go the only kind of annoying thing is i i mean everyone deals with this like have all these pages that um keep it from bleeding or you know scratching um one page to another but i love these sketchbooks and they're it's so rewarding to not have to spend, you know, three hours to get a sketchbook, something <laughs> that I'm happy with. It can be anything from like, I'm doodling and I don't care to like, I'm trying to find one. This is, these are, this is a copy of Sophie McPike. She's um, awesome and I love her. These are from Art Hang Party with Melissa Martin. Anyway, all those are more of my like tricks to to do more artwork. I'm trying to see one where I put more energy into it, but I can't find it right now, of course. Oh well, maybe this isn't my like, I put more energy into <laughs> to a sketchbook. This is another like limited color palette, like I was mentioning before from a picture of me a long time ago. Anyway, I love this sketchbook um, and I don't feel precious. These are like $8, sometimes 10, sometimes you can get them for seven. Um, but they're just like great sketchbooks that are really rewarding to like bust through. I think the handbook, what are these called? The handbook? Yeah. I think these are supposed to be really good. Um, the watercolor ones are supposed to be really good. And I could see this just if I'm never using water media being okay too, but so far not quite as much of a fan <laughs> as the um, Talons ones. I mean, the outside feels nice and they're a little bit bigger, but anyway, um, both of the pages on both of these are a little kind of off color or off color, <laughs> off white, um, color to them, which I like. I know a lot of people though really want it to be white, white. So anyway, that's my like go-to. I grab it. It's small. It fits anywhere. I'll just quickly, because I don't want this to be nine years. I'm sorry. It's been so long already show you like sometimes if I'm going for longer or I just want more options um I have so what I'll do is I'll grab this setup and then if I'm like and I want um like colored pencil like this is my colored pencil case this has my prisma colors in it I also have a smaller colored pencil case if I'm like this is too much because this is like you know I think this is the 70 no it's probably 150 72 or 150 I can't remember Prisma colors in here. I have a smaller one though. If I'm like, I want colored pencils, but not that many. And it's also um, a different brand that I don't feel quite as precious with as <laughs> Prisma colors. It's cheaper, so it can be my like, I want colored pencil, but um, it might get beat up. But what I can do is, if I don't want to take that, if I do want Prisma color, but I don't want to take that huge case, I'll just pick like a handful of pencils and I'll put them in the bottom. Um, so sometimes this, this can still close, but, uh, I can keep this out or keep it to the side if I want. So sometimes I'll do that, but I can just kind of like throw in a few extra media in here at any point and it works super well. Um, like these, I don't unfortunately recommend these. <laughs> these are Sennelier ink brushes. Um, they are really hard to get. The ink out it's like really frustrating oh this one's not even been cracked yet hold on uh, yeah it just like it totally destroyed one of my pieces i was working on the other day and i got pissed um but anyway it's really hard to get the color out so i'm just trying to use them up so i'll often throw something like this in when i'm sketching where it's like okay this isn't my forever um tool but like it's still art supplies and I want to get rid of it but I can use it in a more free way so I'll throw that in to just like sometimes just back color my sketchbook page and then do graphite or ink on top or color pencil but so yeah I can still like throw in extra little fun tools from time to time or like I said I'll you know grab my pastels and be like okay I'm gonna bring the tiny guy in my pastels or I'll bring the tiny guy um I also have this set which was originally this it was supposed to be my like grab anywhere set but this is the one i think that had the bad um pockets in it so this is one that was originally supposed to be my go anywhere case um but i've just filled it up with tombos and so this could be like my 
grab marker, brush markers with my main case. This is like I was mentioning, it has that deep pocket. So this can be maybe a lesson if you want to hear it of like what to look for in cases like this that you're buying. So yeah, I would just like, I couldn't get stuff down here and it would just always fall out and be a jumble or my pencil sharpener would come apart. Um, but this, it's still handy. It has um, good elastic here. But then even though this little flap seemed like a cool idea, I found that if I filled this part up before, this part would get really, it would turn into too much. So I'd either have to take these out or take a bunch of stuff out of here. So anyway, it was annoying. Um, these are Tombow. I don't have a huge Tombow collection. They are expensive. And I haven't decided if I want that many more of these. And I don't use markers quite as much. I honestly use them more in mixed media. And like, these are like um, Artix. This is a pretty decent, I like this brand so far. Uh, it's kind of a cheapo Amazon brand. It's probably on Timu too, I'm not sure. Um, but these are acrylic markers. These are not acrylic. These are what? Washable, water-based. Are they acrylic or ink-based? I forget how Tombow works, sorry. But yeah, they're more watercolor feel. These are more opaque. Um, uh acrylic markers but they work great and they work like over everything um i really like them a lot and they the amount of um of like acrylic whatever paint in them is solid like they've lasted already a really long time so i do like these a lot so this is kind of like my different kinds of markers thing um, so yeah, I'll grab that. And then I also have like a more elaborate watercolor setup if I want to bring something a little bit nicer. So I'll like take this guy out. Um, I'll put some nicer brushes into one of these little flip cases, um, which I'm, I'll go through brushes another time. These are some of the Japanese calligraphy brushes that you can get that I really like as I got a set and they're really great as watercolor brushes. Um, for an affordable price if you're like me and are kind of brutal <laughs> but yeah so if I want these are like professional um, watercolors that I've put into one of these clearly leaks sometimes <laughs> um, keep it wet cases what are these stay wet palettes or something um, you certainly don't have to keep watercolors wet um, I could have dried these out but so I haven't decided if I love these yet. I also put gouache, like a cheaper gouache, in one of these, and I didn't realize they would mold. So warning if you do something like that, um, that the gouache will, depending on the brand you get maybe, I don't know if other ones do that, will mold. But these watercolors have not. Um, so um, I keep it wet just because I sometimes don't have a ton of um, water with me depending on where I go and so it just helps me use less water oh there was another trick and it's not I, because I was using this yesterday another very important tool in my everyday kit is missing um, I don't know what happened to it because I know I used it yesterday oh I have another one in my other art kit it's these guys so this is um, the Birch and Company brand um, but it's a little spray bottle teeny tiny spray bottle um, that fills up with water and squirts. I bring these with me too. So in case, you know, I have the water brush, but in case this is low or whatever, just having that little bit of extra water is nice. And I'll just spray my palette, um, to help this water go a little bit further. Or sometimes I'll use this to like wet the, um, paper. So that is another part of this always stays in there unless I use it and forget to put it back in. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot those two. So yeah, if I want a nicer watercolor setup, I'll bring a nicer watercolor palette. Um, sometimes I'll even throw tubes or whatever in. And then I have this guy, which is a nice screw on. Doesn't leak if you screw it all the way down. I have once accidentally not screwed it all the way down. But um, these are water holders that I will put on just this like really old clipboard and then um, I'll put my paper here and clip it in various ways 
and you know people have nicer setups than this too but um i'll usually just like put my palette down here um people have like magnetized things and all sorts of crazy stuff going on with their travel palettes which all look awesome and um, i could see myself adding on eventually but for now this just works as or you know the other thing i'll do is just washi tape around um for painting on the go and then i also have this is just like a cheap um amazon travel watercolor set that actually are really nice i've been impressed with how well they work um let's see if i can show an example oh i'll just do it with this so this is another thing, my Neocolor 2's just in a handy little um, metal case that I had, I think it came with some crystals in it or something on Amazon. Um, and this has been really handy too for like, I really like Neocolors, just make for really like loose sketchbooking um, and really loose like fast drawings. Um, so I really always like messing around with those, but yeah, these brushes are not like the fanciest but they like I said I'm hard on my brushes so having a metal enclosure so that I don't ruin the tip um and keep them kind of safe on the go is really nice so um these ones I have heard people say yeah this one has a hole in the top so that's another thing to pay attention to um if it doesn't have the hole in the top and you put your wet brush people have said it's created mold problems so if you do get one of these cheaper sets uh it might be worth looking at that eval is what it says on this but um I can't remember all the sizes but it's got you know these are mostly like more fine tipped I would say the biggest is maybe like a six or a four that's kind of one negative maybe is it doesn't have the sizes on the brushes um but you know that doesn't bother me it's just like oh it does <laughs> sorry <laughs> so this is part of where my casual approach can get kind of funky sometimes is I don't often pay attention I'll just like grab a brush but yeah it's two through five are the sizes oh plus this guy it is a one okay so i wasn't off i think i said six maybe is the largest um okay so these are great and there's like a bajillion different kind of cheapo brands of these so read the reviews this one so far so good eval so yeah that's just kind of a rundown of like different iterations i can bring with me um i'm probably gonna save my like larger kit for another time just like sneak peek but it has more poscas more it has like putty for charcoal um so i'll do that one another time when i haven't talked so much this is another thing i left out but it has traditionally been in my mini kit on the go um it came with graphite in here originally this is another just like cheapo amazon thing um i got the sepia like do you call this lead? It's like a crayon, I guess. Um, just because I was really enjoying doing some sepia drawings. Um, and it has in the top here a little screw off sharpener for the large leads. Um, I'll often, these don't work super awesome. They do work, um, but I'll often just use um, a pencil sharpener <laughs> to sharpen these. It works okay. You just have to be careful, obviously, that you're um, not breaking the longer lead. So this has always been in this case, but what I have recently found that I prefer because you can just get so many different medium, um, so many different like drawing materials in one pen is this Krita Color Ergonomic. I like the Krita Color brand. They have some really good products. They have these fat color pencils that I like a lot, but it has a much longer shaft, I guess. Um, it looks about the same, but you can fit way longer, um, leads into this one. And it has this really nice ergonomic grip. The red one in particular, people complained about some of the other, um, styles of this. Um, but this has a charcoal lead, which is awesome. So you can put charcoal in here, which I'm not very good with charcoal blocks. I prefer a charcoal pencil, 
but the problem I always have with a charcoal pencil in my um, art case, because I'm rough on my supplies, is it just like either the tip breaks constantly or because I'm rough on my case, it'll break the lead all throughout the pencil. And no matter what I do, if I sharpen it, the charcoal just like falls apart and I can't ever get it. So it's like I either have to, I have another case smaller than this that I take with charcoal blocks in it. And I also have some fine charcoal in there, but I would always rather um, have it in a pencil and pencils, just charcoal pencils have not worked <laughs> in my case. But then the cool thing is, sorry, this was $10. This was something I saw, oh crap, I saw at my local art store and I just got it, but they had the not good holder for it. So I got this holder on Amazon is in here they have not only the sepia lead but they have graphite 4b lead they have this darker like um i would call this sepia what am i calling this is this sepia no whatever i'm, I'm brain brain farting on the color it's that dark brown color <laughs> it's really popular anyway it has these different leads so um to do so like you can just switch out whatever drawing tool you want in here. Sorry, I'm starting to lose my words because I've been talking too much, but the white works really well. I was shocked how well the white worked on most media. So it works well over acrylic, over charcoal, over, um, this is over watercolor. Yeah, and these are strong. Like I was using them a little bit before I got the holder for it. So these are great and it has charcoal leads and um, graphite leads. So this, even though I love it and I will still use it because um, I do have the graphite leads for these two, but this is going to get replaced in my everyday kit with this guy because again, just like fewer heavy, this, this thing's pretty heavy, fewer um, heavy pencils and pens and everything. I can get a lot more in a small little footprint. So anyway, these are just a few of my like FYI information bits and ideas again the goal isn't like you should go out and get all of these products what I really want is like here's some problems I've had some solutions I've found with the goal being that hopefully you can find solutions with investing less than I have um, into your supplies and really just like finding things like getting the most possible because for me, I really hate, like there's some people who are like, I love pen and ink and that's it. And that's all they travel with. If you're like my son, like I love graphite. That's all I need. But for me, like, it's like when I have to pack clothes for a trip, it's like, oh, I don't know what mood I'm going to be in. You know, I'm not going to, might not be in the mood for this outfit when I get there. And it's really stressful to me to like be hemmed in by whatever I happen to pack. So to have as many possible, like, flexible options on the go is really helpful to me and it's just really I've created so much more art and so much just more practice I have so much more fun and I'm so much more likely to do it since I found this little system um, that works for me and so I thought I would share in hopes that it would encourage you to find a system for yourself that um, you can really take anywhere and that you get joy out of using and you don't have supplies that are kind of frustrating you, holding you back, um, but are things that you really want to use and feel good using. So more videos to come. I'll show you some of my other favorite supplies um, and like learnings, you know, through buying the wrong supplies. And then I'll definitely share that those tips for like, um, just having a lot more fun practicing and all sorts of like awesome free resources all over the place that I've found that have really just encouraged me to just like love, love, love practicing. And that just naturally has created more doing art, putting myself out there, um, going for it and shows, you know, still not feeling like I've made it, but like just having a lot more confidence to go for my dreams. So hope that was helpful. Please feel free to leave comments, suggestions, ideas below. Um, please feel free to explore my other kind of content, but if it weirds you out, you know, ignore it. Take what works for you. <laughs> leave the rest. I know I have kind of diverse um, interests and hobbies, so my goal really is to just encourage people to follow their dreams and follow their, you know, 
their loves and their passions and um, encourage encor encourage more fun <laughs> and exploration in the world. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I always appreciate like subscribes, comments, just because it helps me to understand what kind of content to create and um, maybe makes this something that uh, contributes to me being able to follow my dreams more and support my family along the way. So happy creating. I hope you go do some art. If you don't go do some art, go hang out outside somewhere. All right. Take care. Bye.